Thank you. It's, uh, it's lovely to be here as the uh, process of bronchial thermoplasty moves from its science to its delivery to patients. Uh, my job is to talk to you about the safety. Um, this is key to everything we do from now on with bronchial thermoplasty uh, and was integral in our thoughts uh, on the day that I remember very well when uh, six individuals, including um, Jerry Cox, walked into my office and said to me, we want you to take some of your very worst asthmatics and bronchoscope them for 45 minutes. Not only that, we're going to apply heat to 60 degrees centigrade for 10 seconds at each site, and we're going to do this to every accessible airway. Um, and one wondered about the safety profile of this. They had no long-term safety profile of this nine years ago. And it was really largely due to the persuasivity, their inclusivity in the scientific process, uh, and their seriousness of the, the uh, process of this, that we proceeded down this uh, interesting and fascinating route and are still here nine years on. In terms of safety, I, I, Jerry has talked to you about the three uh, main uh, studies, and I will talk to you briefly through two of these and then focus on the RESA study, because it was one that really focused on safety. But we've heard about AIR2 study. It's the one that's had the most procedures, 850 procedures um, during the study. And in the 560 treated bronchial thermoplasty uh, individuals, there have been no instances of anything really nasty that we thought might happen. No pneumothoraces, no intubations, no mechanical ventilations, no subsequent um, airway stenosis or focal narrowing, or evidence of bronchiectasis, which was one of the concerns, no evidence of cardiac arrhythmias, and thank goodness no evidence of death. Um, it is worth pointing out that the initial um, consent forms that we did also talked about airway fires. Uh, and it is surprising maybe that we've got patients to take part in the study, but I'm also pleased to say there was no such things uh, happening either. Um, we've also heard about the AIR study. This was the original study that we did, and uh, some of my patients now eight years since they took part in this, but we have published five-year safety data. Um, and within this, no deaths, and then completely absence of clinical complications that can be put down to bronchial thermoplasty. In the figure here, you can see the FEV1 and FVC for this study over the five years in those people who took part in the follow-up study. And there are now annual CT scans for five years from the feasibility study patients uh, and for one year in the AIR2 um, study. And review of these CT scans has shown no clinically significant findings or structural changes as a con consequence of bronchial thermoplasty. As I said, the main study that looked at um, safety was the RESA study. Uh, this, as Jerry pointed out, was a population slightly more severe than included in the previous populations, and we'll see from the entry criteria how severe these people were. Uh, for example, one of my patients who I recruited was on 30 milligrams of prednisolone a day when he went into the study and was getting between eight and 10 hospitalizations per year, which will give you a feel for it. It's worth pointing out on this slide that um, five of the centres that took part were UK-based and there's two Canadian centres, and one will notice there's no American centres. I think Jerry has talked largely about the protocol of the study. Interesting components to it were the fact that we had a steroid wean phase uh, between 6 and 22 weeks where patients had their oral steroids or inhaled steroids reduced before a stabilisation phase at the end of four months. Only the actively treated patients were entered into the follow-up study. This is the patient demographic population. You can see that the FEV1 was a genuinely severe um, subgroup of patients with an FEV1 of 63% uh, who got treated. They were on um, oral steroids. Eight of the bronchial thermoplasty, seven of the control group were on oral steroids. Those on oral steroids, this was their mean daily dose, in brackets is the median daily dose. They were on high-dose inhaled steroids, all of them, and as you can see, that they were on too much long-acting bronchodilator with an average daily dose of 1 to 5 micrograms. And the final thing to point out is the very high rate of rescue medication, uh, 62 puffs equivalent per seven days. Uh, Jerry's already gone through a little bit of the um, uh, efficacy data. You can see the very big responses for quality of life and symptom score um, data which I will not repeat. I think it is worth looking at the drop in rescue medication use from 60 to 24 puffs per week and uh, as described there have been small changes in emergency room visits and hospitalizations in this study. 
Four of the eight patients treated were able to come off oral corticosteroids completely and the overall reduction in uh, corticosteroid use was 63% in those treated, 26% in the control group. Despite these reductions in oral and in some cases inhaled steroids, the symptom um, scores, rescue medication use, uh, stayed significantly improved at the 12 month point. What about adverse events? As already described, these patients do get worse for a few days post-procedure. That's really to be expected on the basis of what we're doing to them. The vast majority of these uh, events occur within the first day or 24 hours of a procedure. And again, the vast majority of them are resolved at seven days. There were seven patients uh, hospitalized and my gentleman on 30 milligrams of prednisolone and his previous exacerbations was admitted overnight for each three procedures, but was discharged the, set the next day. What about the follow-up data? We have 14 patients of the 15 who agreed to take part in the follow-up data. We have had one death uh, in this population during um, the follow-up. I think you will probably agree that we can't in any way think that the cause of death might be related to bronchial thermoplasty. I'll be happy to discuss that later if you wish. We've lost one patient at year five and so have uh, 12 patients uh, data out to five years. In terms of adverse events, this is the uh, list of adverse events over the five year time period in those people taking part in the study. Um, I think the bottom graph is more interesting looking at the asthma exacerbations, which over the five years has tended to tail off. Uh, plotted as a bar chart, hospitalizations uh, for asthma exacerbations um, over the um, five years look like this, with a gradual and progressive reduction in hospitalizations and, and ER visits over the five years. Lung function, there was actually a statistically significant increase in FEV1 during the first 12 months of a study, and there has been no fall off of that lung function uh, subsequent to the completion of the first year. If any of you are interested in other um, measures, there is rather an interesting, uh, but for me unexplained, improvement in diffusing capacity over the five years of follow-up. I think uh, data from Helium MR um, studies which might uh, follow um, our current data might explain why this is occurring. So in summary, we have five years of data now um, for patients taking part in the early studies of bronchial thermoplasty. And in that five years, we've so seen no increase in uh, adverse events over a five-year period. The patients are staying well, uh, and Jerry's described the patients, and I could describe several um, who are similarly staying well post-treatment. Over time, we have not seen any increase, and in, if anything, we're seeing a decrease in ER visits and hospitalizations. Um, hospitalizations are for expected problems in a group of severe asthma patients. We have not seen a drift up in their average asthma medications. We have seen no deterioration of FEV1. And most importantly, we've seen no instance of any severe or dangerous um, adverse event from bronchial thermoplasty. And in conclusion, Mr. Chairman, the, um, the safety profile of bronchial thermoplasty at five years appears to be strong. Thank you very much.